This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Now, they immediately cut to a promo from uh, The Miz and Big Show. They play their unique theme song, or it's a combination of both guys, and they come out as the unified tag champs. They've not only got the Raw tag team titles, but they've also got the SmackDown ones. I loved the way Big Show would snap them together and just throw them over his shoulder. Really cool look. Of course, Miz is just covered in gold. He's also the United States champion, and he knows how to get heat here when they're talking about being the greatest tag team in history. Of course, Show Miz is their name. Um, he's saying he wants competition. Teddy Long comes out, and Miz cuts him off and says, if I wanted mind-numbing incompetence, I'd go to an Orioles game. And, man, they're all over him. So fun stuff there. Of course, you know what's happening. If Teddy Long's here, we're getting a tag team match player. And uh, the more Miz protests, the more teams that they have to go through, uh, they get up to three and then he asks for four and big show covers his mouth. Like, Nope, we don't want that. We're going to shut them up. And the, the idea here is they're going to have to defend a, their titles against a series or wrestle against a series of tag teams and whoever beats them gets a title shot the next night on raw. So the first set of opponents are truth and John Morrison. They go three minutes and 13 seconds. It's a DQ that Meltzer would call just a terrible finish. But before we talk about the match, let's talk about the two teams. We'll start with our truth and John Morrison. What's the thinking in, in this pairing? Obviously very talented individual performers. They've both had great success with other tag team partners. what do you think of those two as a unit? Just odd because there's no history right. and the prize was so big. No, I agree. Arn. it stuck out to me too. Uh, conversely though, I did like the way the other tag team look. I like the, uh, sort of classic pairing of a quote unquote chicken shit heel who runs his mouth like Miz and then the big nasty heater, the giant big show behind him just to sort of right all the wrongs that the Miz lays out there. I, I feel like it's, uh, almost a tale of two teams, but we get another match right behind it. It's show and Miz this time they pick up a win over, um, MVP. And Mark Henry, uh, MVP is a guy who I didn't realize that, that I miss seeing on TV for whatever reason, he has a, a natural charisma here and to see him teaming up with Mark Henry, that's a tag team that I think could have had more legs. What say you? Yeah. And it was all log jammed. If you go back and watch the match, it was all log jammed in there. There wasn't much time. Mark wasn't featured at all. In that match, it was so short. You know, his MVP got in. He looked pretty good. Uh, and then, you know, he hits his finish on Miz and covers him and show from the floor. And if we back up here just a little bit, but show hits the, you know, the punch, the KO punch from the floor. One, two, three, Miz goes over. But the ref was looking at it. Now, the referee is John Cohn, and he's excellent. And as a person, I love him. And as a referee, he's great. Every here, Here's where I got a little confused. Everything was introduced, Extreme Rules, 2010. Every match, I think the announcer said this, will fall under Extreme Rules, rules. Right. Correct? Right. Okay, so you get to that first finish. And you've got a triangle choke with Morrison hanging on the outside with that hold hooked. He doesn't break on five. He's got it on show, right? He doesn't break on five, so they DQ it. Now, if everything is under extreme rules, rules, how can you have a DQ? Right. That right away hit me wrong. And I know that... You know, I'm a stickler for for rules and this making sense and that making sense, but you can't have a DQ right there and then turn around in the very next fall and the referee looking right at the giant who's on the floor and illegal and hits a KO punch and you count the one, two, three. Doesn't mesh, does it? No. Now, that may not be a valid point, and I may be the only one on earth that even looks at it that way. No, that's not true. I, I know there's uh, one uh, independent referee in Mississippi right now thinking the same thing. So, you know, you got you to gotta have some continuity. Number one, 
you don't have to have every match be a falling under extreme rules because it becomes redundant on the number of toys you can use throughout the night. There's only so many things you can use. And when you start repeating yourself, then the show becomes a little redundant. But moving on, you get your victory over MVP, which brings us to our third tag match. Yeah, our third tag match. And this is really what they're looking for. Uh, the music hits and down run David Hart Smith, who we now know as uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr., and Tyson Kidd. And they're going to pick up a win in just 11 seconds. It's pretty cool. Brett's out with them. Of course, Natalia's out as well. Uh, Tyson Kidd's hair is the best part of this whole thing. Uh, he, Tyson Kidd looks like he's been manscaped from head to toe here. Uh, but it's, it, I love their tag team. And of all the tag teams that we've looked at here, this one feels like it's the most sort of branded and cohesive unit and a marketable tag team. Like the heart dynasty to me just looks like, oh, well, this is going to be the future. And it's weird to look back 10 years and know, well, it's not going to last that long. Why don't you think this was more of a hit? I loved bull puppy, which is Davey boys. Young is what I used to call him bull puppy and TJ. They were a great team that came along in an era where we were still stuck in too small, too short, too whatever. Those guys were excellent excellent team and it was just one of those deals that they weren't meant to get over if they would have just been given the proper little shove and i'm talking a month was all it would have taken to cement them in the people's minds as competitors and as a good team that have been off and running and what an asset they would have made yeah, it's a shame that we didn't get to see them longer. You know, I would have liked to have seen them have, you know, a 10 minute match or whatever here, but instead we're trying to tell a story, I guess, but I just missed the heart dynasty. I feel like it was a missed opportunity and there's no telling what those guys could be doing now. If, you know, maybe things had gone a little differently. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.